everybody doing? Today's a good day. Let me tell you why. Alright, today is New Year's Day 2021. And today is the day we're putting the Mercedes on the ground. school because 90% of everything that we have done on this vehicle is done. Just the accomplishment of restoring a car that should have never been restored, I don't think you know what the feeling of that is. I don't know if you can realize what it's like taking something uh, and, and nothing, I might say, I'm sorry, taking nothing and making it into something. So this is what it looks like when it's actually on four wheels on the ground. Now we don't have the motor or the transmission in the car yet. We don't have um, the electrical, the wiring, or nothing done on it. But what we have done on it is all the rust repair is completed and 90% of the bodywork is done. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. Now, if you've been watching this video series on this car and also following it on Facebook and Instagram, then you know that this job should have never even been tackled. This car should have never been restored. Um, the owner, as of right now, and of course this includes the brand new suspension, everything that I've done to it, the labor, all the parts that we had to chase down and everything that we had to do to it, the owner, as of right now today, has close to $25,000 in this car, as it sits right here. That doesn't include interior, doesn't include motors and transmissions. He's got twenty-five dollars sitting here in this car. And this was a very, very big restoration. Um, we had a lot of body work on this side. I searched high and low. Uh, all around the world, um, inside out, upside down, for a quarter panel. I wanted to replace that quarter panel. Um, the quarter panel was in very, very serious damage. We ended up replacing the bottom down there. And then, of course, you see all the bodywork that had to be done to it. Now, when you look at this bodywork, I want to go ahead and explain to you. This is not 10 inches thick. Okay, this is not a bondo buggy. Everything that you're looking at has been hammered and dollied out to perfection before we put any bondo on the vehicle at all. It's just that this car was so hammered and so beat that it had dings and dents everywhere. So the next thing that we're going to do is we'll go ahead and tackle the deck lid. Um, I guess European name for it would be boot. The boot lid. There you go. The boot lid. Um, Australia might call that the boot. Uh, I call it a trunk over here in America. But yeah. So it's got different names um, for different parts. Uh, is this called a quarter panel? Can anybody answer that? Do they call this a quarter panel in Europe? Or in Australia? What is this called? Over here it's a quarter panel. It's a rear panel. Um, we replaced this panel. 
Uh, it had a few dings on it, and then of course I had to uh, mold in where we had to weld it together because this is a seamless body. And when I say seamless, that means that when you look at the body of the car, not the doors and the fenders, we're talking about the main body, it looks like it's a molded one-piece body. Um, we had to mold this in. Very unusual situation. I'm going to tell you what's going on here. The rocker panels that we used were um, four-door rocker panels. They were not authentic two-door hardtop rocker panels. I had to modify these rocker panels to fit and work on this car. They were 1976 Mercedes, but they were four doors. Now, the fender is another story. Um, the fender and the door are from two different vehicles. Um, if you remember me telling you, the front end of this car is from a European style, German style car. It's not the American model. The car in question and the car we're in is an American car. So when I took all these parts off of the German car, the parts car to put on the American car, parts didn't line up like they should. So what happened over here is we had a very unusual gap and the gap looked really good on the top here but when we got to this point here it started closing up and um, rubbing and touching. Now these fenders, if you look inside, you can see how they're glued to the body and they also have this panel that is pinch welded all the way around. When I say pinch welded, it's rolled just like a door. It's got a, a pinched roll that holds that together. So this fender only goes on one way. All right, there's basically no adjustments. And if there is any adjustments, very, very slightly, slight adjustment. So when you put this thing together, that's it. Now the hood does have some adjustment. We haven't adjusted the hood properly yet because we got to take it off. But as far as the fenders go, there's really no adjustment at all. If you look at the fenders, you can see it looks, that gives it the illusion of a one-piece molded body. And then of course they bolt to the core support. And it's very, very extreme and exotic how these fenders go on. So, we got the fender on, we got the door on, and then what I had to do and you'll have to watch the video on that, is I had to make the gap bigger. We had to widen that gap out, and we had to literally cut some of the fender off, and also some of the edge of the door to get that gap proper. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the bodywork on the, the hood and the deck lid. We're gonna come back and we're gonna take a gander at that. We really didn't see my friend Pete doing a lot of bodywork on this, because I wanted to get it done. Um, I don't know if anybody out there realizes this, but making these videos really is a time-consuming job. I said job. All right? And to do them the way that I do them takes hours and hours of hours of filming and editing to make these videos worthwhile for you to watch and for you to learn. Because that's what my goal is is for you to watch a video and to learn from my experiences. So I didn't do a lot of videotaping on body work. I don't even know if I did any at all. Um, I just wanted to get it done. I'll come back and we'll take a look at it and see what we got to do to get these straightened out and finished out and ready for polyester primer. And you heard me right. I said a word in my shop that I don't like to use. I use the word polyester. This car is going to have to be sprayed with liquid Bondo, you might call it. Sprayable Bondo. It's a sprayable filler that everybody calls polyester primer. Restoring a rotted, rusted car at home in your garage. Can you do this? Can you do this? 
My friend Pete says, yes, you can. I got plenty of subscribers, plenty of people that watch my videos that have done it and are in the process of doing it. So yes, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Okay, many of the body shop girls over here working on Nightmare. Let's go see what's going on with it. 1976 Mercedes Benz. We're getting close. Hold on a second. What's going on? What, what are you doing? Oh, did I bother you? Yes, you are bothered. What did I do? Well, I'm listening to something. What are you listening to? None of your business. What are we doing here? What's going on? We're taking off, Pete. We're actually taping this thing off this junkyard car that came out of a scrap iron yard in Louisiana somewhere. We're actually... Yeah. We're actually getting ready to put primer on this thing? We are. Wow! Imagine I can't that. believe that. Did I show you the damage on the roof, on the hood, and the deck lid on this thing? Come over here and help. Did I show here. you? What do you need? Over need? here. Okay, hold on. Let me. Okay. All right, what's up? Put your hand right oh, here. Oh, right here? Okay, go ahead. Manny's really thorough on this tape job. Even though we're just priming it. doesn't want to stick. Okay, push it right here. Hard, hard, hard. There you go. Nope. Okay, that's Stop. good. Damn it. Uh, okay, it's just for primer. I mean, we really don't need to be exactly accurate. All right, so uh, what are we doing here? Why? You haven't answered no questions. I'm typing the car off. For what? You already said. For what? I'm typing the car off for primer. How many okay. times do you want me to say it? Okay, looking good. Well, uh, we got a lot of priming to do, or we I don't, don't know. know. What do you think? Uh, the whole car? You think that's a lot? All right. Uh, Are you just acting stupid? Just to act stupid. You know, people are probably looking at this uh, this boot. We're going to call this a boot because it's a German car. Can we do that? Can we call this a boot? I don't care. I don't know. What, what's the deal with that? Somebody leave a comment. Why do they call a trunk lid a boot? Can we do that, please, people? Do that for me. My friend Pete, thank you very much. A lot of people are probably looking at the boot and the hood saying, God, what a bondo buggy. They don't realize all the extreme hammer and dolling and metal shrinking and stretching I have to do, Manny. Yeah. That this is only a skim coat. This is basically only a skim coat just to level everything out. Yep. Am I right or wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I just want to make that clear so nobody calls me Bondo Pete. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. Well, we don't want anybody doing that. But they will, anyhow. You think they will? Of course they will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Minnie is one of the best taper girls I've ever met in my life. She really... I need you to get this piece of Bondo off of here, too. Yeah, get almost, a screwdriver and chip it off. I tried. I almost hurt Okay, my well, don't shut the trunk all the way and I'll get it off. Okay? Good deal. All right. You need to. Okay, there you go. Go back to listening to your talk radio and we'll get back with you later. All right, bye. All right. Uh, Minnie's in a good mood today. My friend Pete's in a good mood. We're not hollering. We're not screaming because Nightmare is turning into a real car and we're almost done with it. Am I right? Yes. Minnie. So let me finish doing what she's doing, and we'll be back later on as my friend Pete primes Nightmare and gets it looking like a real car. Like a real car. Won't be a real car till it's on the trailer and out of my shop. Well, that's the happiest day of Minnie's life, to be honest with you guys. <laughs> And guess what? We're ready to start priming the car. When I say the car, I'm talking about Nightmare. Uh, I'm actually shocked and 
and obliviated by the situation that we're actually this far on this vehicle. After all the rust repair we did, after all the uh, nightmarish actions of rotisserie jobs and concourse restorations and changing out major body sections, we are literally to the point of no return. So Minnie did a great job. She did an awesome job taping this thing off. It looks beautiful. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pat myself on the back. Mm, 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 bitch. For the awesomely, deliciously, uh, fantastically beautiful bodywork that I did to this vehicle. Because uh, most people that would look at this car and say, I'm going to restore that, would not restore it. So I'm going to go ahead and pat myself on the back for that. That I completed this car from start to finish and did a badass fucking job as well. So what we're going to do to get this car rolling and get it in primers, we're going to go ahead and epoxy prime the whole car. Now I'm using Featherfield G2, Evercoat Featherfield G2 polyester primer. Now it's not spray on Bondo, it's a primer, but it's a heavier duty primer and it also in the meantime seals everything up so nothing will shrink. Um, 2K primer does the same thing but by using the polyester primer, you're ensuring yourself 100% that none of the bodywork will shrink down. So I'm going to go ahead and epoxy prime the whole vehicle. And then once I do that, we're going to go ahead and put two full wet coats of this stuff on right here. I want everybody to look close here. This is not spray on Bondo. This is a primer. This is a high build, non-shrinkage Cross link cure primer. The only way you can use this is you have to spray it on epoxy primer. You cannot put it on bare metal. Do not let anybody tell you that. And that's why I have led into this stuff right here. If you put this on bare metal, it will not stick, it will fall off. Um, I believe that if anybody has been watching me for a long time, watch the videos on the uh, 72 Oldsmobile 442 and you'll see what happened to me when I used the U-Pole resurface spray on Bondo. So what this is going to do for us, this is going to seal everything tight and another thing it's going to do is going to self level itself out but it's a super high build polyester primer, primer not Bondo. And then what it'll do is it'll self level itself out and it'll make it easier for us to block sand it. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done. And then once I get that done, then me and Minnie the Body Shop Girl will be out here for several days hand sanding and block sanding the polyester primer that we have to apply to this car. Which is not an easy job. I will tell you right now, polyester primer is very hard to block sand. And the only way to do it right, to get the accurate precision situation that you need from using it is a hand block. That's it. If we rely on air tools to do the work for us, on the Feather Fill G2 primer, what's going to happen is we have wasted our time. And when I say waste our time, by using air tools on a consumption of a disastrous situation like we have with all the bodywork going on, if we use air tools on that, it will not be the proper job that we want. The only way to make the panels straight, clean, and sharp is by hand sanding them. So me and Minnie the Body Shop Girl got a lot of work to do. Um, before I go, we probably might have some new viewers here that are watching this and I've said the story before, I'm going to go tell you real quick why the owner is restoring this car. It's because he actually purchased this car for his father. His father was 87 years old. In 1976, this is the only car his father ever wanted. They're from Poland. His father is Polish. He does not speak English. And in Poland in 1976, this was the ultimate luxury car ever built. So Mr. Majestic, the owner of this vehicle, purchased this car for his father to give him as a present several years back. 
And approximately a year and a half ago, basically when we started on this car, Mr. Majestic's father became ill and passed away. So the destiny of restoring this car and finishing it out is all in the hands of what we call memories. Memories that will live on forever when Mr. Majestic takes his 1976 Mercedes-Benz German cut vehicle down the highway, he will always have his father sitting next to him in the passenger seat. And now you basically understand that money is no matter in restoring this vehicle. It doesn't matter how much it will cost the owner. He doesn't care. This is a car of his dreams. When he was a little boy in 1976, his father begged to have one of these and couldn't afford it. And Mr. Majestic wanted to make his dreams come true. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, restoring a 1976 Mercedes-Benz and letting dreams live on. Take it easy. Well, we have taken the 1976 Mercedes Benz and we have engulfed the body in liquid epoxy primer. I think it came out awesome. I think the car really. I mean, I'm actually speechless. I'm literally speechless of uh, the way it turned out. Because when you do this type of body work, and I mean, it's pretty extreme. You saw the situation. You're, you're nervous and you're excited and you're anxious to see what it's going to look like in one solid color where you can't see the body work anymore. Um, what I'm really excited about and very, very happy is that hood. You can see the sheen on it when I move my camera back and forth, and it really, really, really came out exceptionally good. I'm, I, I just can't believe it. So our next step in line to get this thing done is I'm getting ready to spray my Featherfield G2 on the car. Um, now, when I spray this stuff on there, I only put a maximum of two coats. So, and one more thing about this stuff is it's really got to be shaken up really, really good. There's a lot of high solids in this stuff. And just doing this, I gotta say, it's a workout. A real, real workout. Um, the reason we're using buff, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you why, is because the buff actually kind of creates its own guide coat. When you're block sanding it, you can literally see dark and lights in there. Um, I had a guy ask me, okay, you're putting gray epoxy primer on, why aren't you using gray? Because with gray, you have to spray a guide coat on it. But I found that the buff, if you use the buff G2, kind of eliminates that uh, guide coat. 
So let me go ahead and get that done. I got a lot of shaking up to do over here. And uh, our car is looking fucking awesome. I'm telling you, I am really, really, really shocked and surprised on this fucking thing. It looks like a brand new car. Totally, totally insane. This is, this is a snarkle of a fucking deal going on over here, guys. Look at this. It's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. on the old Mercedes, Mr. Nightmare. I thought we were out of the rut. I thought the nightmare was over, but you know what? It's not. Because what I'm doing now is I'm actually block sanding. Oh, man. Hand block sanding the polyester primer that I put on here. Well, what I'm doing now is I'm using my long blocks, and these are hand blocks. And the reason I'm using this block is because when you use this heavy block, it's got a handle and it's got a steerer. Okay, this is your steering wheel, and then this is your train, this is your motor. And what we're doing is I'm not pushing down. That's what screws everything up when you're block sanding something like this. When you're using a block and you got to push down to give a pressure. By using these blocks, I don't have to do that. So I'm hand sanding the whole hood, just like you're watching me do. And that side's already done. And I'm getting rid of our high spots, and I'm finding low spots. Let me go ahead and show you what's going on here. You can see this side here is already done. And when you're sanding something like this, you can't just get in there and start sanding. You've got to do it in sections. You've got to take, like, I will cut this hood in half in four ways. So I sanded this section first, then I came down here. So I'm doing the top up there. But I want to show you what I've already found. And I think you're going to be surprised for all the body work that I had to do this. There's not a lot that needs to be done. So if you look right here, there's a low spot here. The reason I can tell that is you can follow your road map. See that right there? You can see where it's busting through, but then it's solid. So that's a low spot. So when I ran my hand over it, sure enough, I got to give some attention to that area. If we look right here, you can see where I sanded it. But look right here. You see what's going on? You can see where I didn't even touch the primer. That's definitely a low spot. Now this spot right here is from using my damp puller. Here's another one. And what that is, that's a high spot. So what I'll do is I'll take my metal file and I'll lightly file those down and then those will go away. But then as we come up on the hood, I can see right here there was an imperfection in a low spot because if you look right in here, and I don't even know if you can see that, there's a dark spot right there. So if I run my hand over it, it feels pretty good. But I still feel that there might be a low spot in this area. So what I'm going to do, and I'm also reading my map. See how we busted through here and right here. And if we keep sanding, it's going to bust through here. You can see it here and here. So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and mark that just to be on the safe side. We had a big spot here. This is the area where I used my uh, heat and my uh, rag um, to heat it up and shrink it back. So we cut that down and I think we got that area. But uh, that's what I'm doing here guys. That's the situation we got. When I get done hand sanding the hood, what I'll do is I'll come back over here. And the deck lid was in really bad shape as well due to sandblasting. So I'll hand, bla I'll hand block the deck lid uh, to perfection. And I think, I think once I, this here isn't going to be as bad as the hood. This came out really clean as far as bodywork goes. So we shouldn't have any situations with that. And if there is, it's going to be really minor. And then once that's done, of course, we got to get these sides. And that is going to take a while. A lot of hand sanding here. There was a lot of body work on this car. But my friend Pete ain't going to bullshit around. 
We're gonna get her done and we're gonna do it right. Well, hold on, what's going on here? We got me and the body shop girl out here. Just picking glue off. Yeah, getting ready to, we're getting ready to work on the Camaro again, huh? Yeah. So what are we gonna do that next? What's the next job of? Uh, well. The next job that we're gonna tackle like a football team. Well, uh, we were gonna tackle putting the engine in, but the engine yeah. came here damaged. Mm. Yeah, a lot of damage. Yeah, so we'll leave that on the back burner. Yeah, Let so, everybody uh, figure that out. What else are we doing? Uh, just prepping stuff for paint. Yeah, we're going to paint the interior. Yep. Get all the interior painted so we can do what? Uh, Wire it up. Get it all wired. We're going to get all the interior done. Yeah. Uh, we got to get a couple quarts of pour 15. We got to clean that floor up really, really good. We're going to pour 15 it for the owner. Um, maybe. Maybe. All right, so I'm going to continue to block them using my hard block. You notice I'm not using a Dura block here. And if you want to learn the proper way to block sand something like this, watch the video on these sanders. It's amazing what these things can do for you. Really, really amazing. Best hand sanders that you'll ever, ever own. I'm sorry, you notice I'm not even wearing a mask here. You know why, Manny? Because we don't have any dust in the air. Because I'm using these. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.